So today we have the second episode of Kabani Forest Story. Yesterday we had the jungle safari and today we've chosen boating provided by the JLR. As it was mentioned in the previous video, this video is specially dedicated to the elephant lovers. This episode includes the boating and a jeep safari in the next day which covers a wide range of forest visuals. We have come back to the room after the breakfast. These JLR buildings were built around the reign of the king of the Mysore. This is a photograph of this building which was taken in 1933. These buildings display the glory of the tradition. This is a small play area and a liquor counter adjacent to it. After stroll on the compound for a little while, we've gone for the boating in the afternoon. We have taken the package for 2 days in this JLR. We had reached the JLR by yesterday afternoon and took the jeep safari. We had the jeep safari to the morning as well. In the afternoon we have two options. Either take the boating or go for the jeep safari. We opted for the boating and we'll check out in the morning following the jeep safari. So totally there are four safaris including this two day package. So that's a great corporate. There are not much cormorants here as compared to the boating we had at Thekadi. So we are going to explore the visual experience from the waters. There are two JLR boats operating today. Since most tourists prefer the jeep safari, there would be less tourists for the boating. It's necessary to take any stay packages for boating. We have to take either Maharaja or Viceroy package for jeep safari. But boating is available for dormitory package also. We can see many birds on the river banks, but I realized the fact that it's not that easy to get the photos or videos of those birds since the boat moves even though they stop the boat to have a good sightings. This is a red-named ibis. Though they are seen in most parts of India, they are basically from Haryana. Their nesting and hatching happen there in Haryana, and once that is over, they fly all the way and are largely seen in Wayanad region. The left side of this river Kabini is the Bandipur Tiger Reserve, and the Nagarhole Tiger Reserve is on the right side. Many children are playing in the waters, but the next visual is the sighting of a crocodile. There are a lot of crocodiles in this river. Our guide told us to zoom in through the binoculars to spot the elephants. Yeah, that really boosted our energy because we could only see a tusker drinking water during our safari yesterday. But today we have a herd of elephants. I think they're coming to drink water. That's an osprey. They don't belong to our region. They fly all the way from Scotland to Kerala and Karnataka, spend the winter and summer here and they fly back to Scotland where they nest and hatch. Therefore, ospreys are migratory birds that cover a large distance during the seasons. They mainly prey on the fishes. They spot fish from the sky and attack the target swiftly. And once the fish is caught, the fish has no escape from its sharp claws. See that collapsed bridge over there. That was once a national highway that connected Wayanad and Mysore. A dam was built across this river in 1974, which came to be known as the Kabini Dam, and this boating is arranged in this reservoir. And when the water level rose, traveling through this bridge became impossible, and it paved the way for the creation of the present Mysore Manandawadi Highway.
Moving forward a little, we could see a tusker and he's a perfect kind of tusker, young and muscular. See his tusks. They are well shaped. I didn't understand what he was doing at first, but after looking at it more closely, I realized he was eating the grass which started sprouting after the summer rain. It is said that these shoots are tasty, therefore these elephants came to eat them. See that a whole family is there, but this tusker actually doesn't belong to this family. They are becoming the part of the family for two to three days for the sake of mating. This baby elephant may not be the kid of this tusker, but it's an apt shot to capture as a family photo. Though the elephants of Muttumalai, Bandipur and Nagarhole are not that beautiful, tuskers which we saw today are so beautiful because of their built and structure. The background, scenery, lighting and the angle made it more beautiful. See the other boat is coming. Even though our boat has only four travelers, the other boat is almost full. Again, we could sight some more crocodiles. The river Kabuni, which originates from Vainad, is a major source of livelihood for the fishermen of this area. Again, we are moving forward. There's a tusker coming out of the waters after his long luxurious bath. So overall, this episode It'll be a beautiful experience for elephant lovers. Not the one who loves the chained ones, but the ones who loves to see them reining the forests without any limits. Maybe those who aren't interested in elephants can skip the video for the next 5 minutes because it's all about elephants till then. Just look at that view of the elephants coming out of the water after its bath. Their black, heavy built, muscular and well structured body is shining in the sunlight. But it's a half tailed one. See his royal walk. He's walking so carefully since his foot is sinking the mud. and he's moving into the next custom of pouring mud all over his body after the bath. They do it because it helps them maintain the moisture for some more time after the bath. And this mud stick on the wet body of the elephant. Usually elephants could not withstand much heat. Therefore, they remain in the forest during the heat times and they always dig up the cool soil and they pour them on their back. But he is not in the mood to retreat, but he is coming back to the waters. That bridge behind the elephant was the bridge we mentioned before which was once a highway. This area belonged to the backwater female which we mentioned in the last video. She used to be spotted on the banks of this reservoir. Though we couldn't spot any tigers today, elephants really made a treat for our eyes. We spotted more than 50 elephants today. None of these elephants which we spotted care about the moving boat. Maybe because they are used to it.
Certainly, just as one admires the scenery in wallpaper images, the highlight of boating in Kabini is witnessing elephants and deer peacefully grazing on lush green fields scattered with dry trees. The enchanting background of the forest adds to the beauty of this captivating scenery. Anyways, we are heading back after the boat safari. And on the way back, we have spotted a laming deer. It might have escaped from a wild dog attack cause its legs are wounded. Usually, it's not that easy to escape from the wild dogs. And the visuals of the wild dogs are yet to come. We have chosen the jeep safari next day morning and we are retreating to our rooms right now. There are a lot of fishes in this river. See the fishes jumping behind the boat. The weather is a bit cloudy and there is a chance to rain. Anyways, I will give the links to book for the stay in the JLR in the description box. I suggest you to take a two-day stay because it is not necessary to get good sightings from just one or two safaris. Two-day packages include four safari and the boating is a must-try. But keep in mind that it is not necessary or possible to spot these many elephants during the boat safari as the previous day only two female elephants were spotted. On the way back, it was drizzling. We came to the spot where we started our boating. The naturalist team from the Jungle Lodge Resort proved to be incredibly supportive, helping us in the animal spotting. Subsequently, we returned to our rooms, enjoyed our dinner and settled in for the night. So we are all set for the Jeep Safari in the early morning itself. Though the safari begins by 6 o'clock, we need to get the Jeep before 5.30 to get better seats. And we got seat in the second row. By 6 o'clock, all had reached the starting point and headed to the check post. This is the reception area of the JLR. After completing the procedures at the check post, we entered the forest by 6.15. The forest looked so beautiful since it was covered in the fog. We had been in the hope that there would be fog since it had rained yesterday and it's a special attraction to sight deer crossing the road in the fog. When I enter the forest, I always wish to get the good visuals of deer. When it rained because I felt that deer had a special beauty to spot them in fog than any other animal. And we had our safari in the A zone yesterday. We are having our safari in the B zone today. The left side of the road is A zone and the B zone lies on the right side of this road. A wild boar is just crossing the road. We stopped our vehicle for a little while since these deer were looking at the same direction expecting some animal sighting. But there were no alarm calls. We had the visual of a hornless female deer early today and now have a horned male deer in front of us. Moving forward a little we could see a wild dog chasing something. Since they were focusing, they cared least about our safari jeeps. We could see only two wild dogs at first and there were four more puppies behind them. They were not good at running and that is the exact reason behind the deer escape. Deer run faster than the wild dogs but the deer could not endure the wild dogs once they attack as a group. There is one of the creature that fears nothing in the forest. And the wild dogs are also like the bears as they fear nothing. And they attack as a team.
Though they seem like domestic dogs, they're a bit dangerous, all of them looking in the same direction. Either some of their group members should have been there or they might have killed something over there. We also moved along with them and the sighting was very cruel. They were having a beautiful deer meal. There were not just 5 or 6 as we thought. There had been almost 10 to 12 wild ducks. They will take a maximum of half an hour to finish the entire deer. It takes almost 10 to 15 minutes for the deer to die. But these wild dogs would have eaten half of the deer before it dies. Though their hunting is so naive and wild, they have a bond between them. They don't fight each other like tiger or leopard over the prey. They don't attack humans much. They run away when they spot human as other animals. In South India, wild dogs are largely seen in Nagarhole. Even though they are less in Kerala, they are spotted in Periyar and wild shell forest sometimes. These wild dogs are very much necessary in the areas like Bandipur and Nagarhole where a lot of deer live because the number of deer are to be reduced naturally by the threat of the wild dogs. Almost half of the deer was finished by the wild dogs within 10 to 15 minutes. We left them behind since they were a little away and behind the bushes. Just going a little further, we spotted a wild boar family. They are very busy digging up the soil in the hope getting some food since it had rained yesterday and above someone was watching everything, a serpent eagle. They have the best vision in the forest, not just a serpent eagle but the whole eagle family. And again, we spotted a tusker, but one of his tusks was broken. It's not just the forest looks beautiful when it rained but all the animals do share the beauty. This tusker might have got its broken tusk while having a fight with fellow elephants, as territorial disputes are uncommon among them. Typically, these majestic creatures engage in internal battles for mating rights with the female elephants. Despite the break in one tusk, the curved appearance of the elephant's remaining tusk looks splendid. Spotting any creature in the forest, particularly after the rainfall, is always a beautiful experience. It's another elephant. I believe it might be the same one we spotted yesterday during our boating on the Kabini River. As the distinctive tusk and the broken tail bear a striking resemblance, Considering the proximity of just 2 to 3 kilometers between that river and this forest safari area, there are chances that it's the same elephant. There is a wild girl. Though it looked like a male, it's actually a female. Recently, there are news depicting the wild goar attack. But usually, the wild goars are not that ferocious. They attack only once they are frightened. There's a beautiful sighting of a peacock drying its feathers using its beak. It looks so beautiful. But they are very good at destroying the crops of farmers. They eat almost every vegetable. That's a female herd with some baby elephants and the baby elephant is doing something with that tree. I suppose he's the youngest one of the herd. 
is always behind his mother. So the Kabini forest which is dedicated to the elephant lovers is now coming to an end. Let's meet once again with another interesting story. Till then bye bye.